first measure that we talked about on Tuesday. Boom! We talked about max in the second year, and then I think we ended up by looking at this again. We looked at percentile rank. Yes. We looked at percentile rank. Did we have you guys all calculate your percentile ranks? Yeah. I think we did. That was the last thing I think we did. Yeah. And we all had different numbers. We had a 25th percentile with a 38th percentile, whatever it was. Good. And what does that tell you? How many are above and below you? Good. The percentage of whatever you're measuring that are below and therefore also above you for that matter. Good. So if you're in the 72nd percentile, what does that mean? 28 out of 100 are above you and the other 72 out of 100 are below you. I, that's a little bit... Good, good, thank you, Sarah, wait a minute, that can't be right. And it can't be, because you have to be in there somewhere. So it can't be 72, 28, but pretend, this is where you have to think you're like a geometry class for a moment. When you were in geometry class, this is probably, I mean, you probably try to forget geometry to some degree, but when you drew things like lines and points in geometry class, you were then told that that line and that point are massless and sizeless. There is no mass, there is no size. Technically speaking, of course there is. You draw with a pencil, which has a width. You have to pretend that your point, your data point, is massless and sizeless. So it's only important to refer to those around it. So that's why I said 7228. Technically speaking, you are one of the hundred. But you can, for, for the sake of generalization and for the sake of getting an idea of what percentile rank is, just pretend that your point doesn't exist. And if this data set gets large enough, that's a pretty good assumption, actually. So good for the concern. I like that very much. Excellent. So percentile rank is one way of dealing with it. It also gets a little micromanagerial because there are a hundred of, I guess there's 99 of them, the first percentile up to the 99th percentile. And then you get, actually there's more than that. You have, you have the 99.99th percentile. You can have decimals on the percents. It gets a little bit cumbersome after, over time. Now they are used in certain places. I asked where the nursing students were. You guys are gonna see it, yes? On that, that tease, that evil tease exam, you're gonna see that. You have, to, you, have to, you have to satisfy a certain percentile rank in that tease exam. We see it, of course, with, with pediatrician growth charts. Of course, we see it there, too. Anybody else see it anywhere else? As a wrong, some of you had heard of it before. You heard it just in the pediatrician world there. Yeah. Nobody's ever seen it before anywhere else? Standardized tests you guys had to take in school? They, they, they gave you your results back, I'm assuming, with percentile results. I remember taking them in eighth grade years ago, um, <laughs> decades ago, in eighth grade. And uh, the CTBS, the California... CTBS, California Test of Basic Skills. People are asking, why am I in Delaware taking a California test? <laughs> Never answered that question, but I got the 99.99 percentile for critical thinking. So I'm guessing that the answer to that question got me the 99.99 percentile for critical thinking. So they didn't tell me you got 100 on the exam. They said you did better than 99.99 percent of people. So I have no idea how many people that was. But I do know I exceeded that percentage of them. So yeah, they... What if everyone were to get the exact same score? Love it! What if everyone... Want the realistic answer or the mathematical answer? The realistic answer. Realistic answer is never going to happen. That's the realistic answer. Now, answer his question mathematically. Suppose every single person in here has visited 18 states. Let's just make up, make up, this, make up the, the situation. What would your percentile rank be? You'd be like almost 100. Because there's nothing below you. I can think of three answers for it. Number one, you're the zeroth percentile because you don't exceed anybody. Number two, go ahead. No, I was thinking zero, 50, or 100. 50 probably makes the most sense if we would even talk about the data set. A better question is why the hell did it happen? <laughs> That's a better question for me is why would the standard deviation be zero? I have yet to meet a data set in 20 years that has a standard deviation of zero. Yet. There's always a measurable standard deviation. But to answer your question mathematically, either zero, 50, or 100, zero by my literal definition, 50, if you use that, you use the ones below plus half of the ones with you. And 100% if you want to just make up something that you feel better about, <laughs> mathematically. So hopefully the best answer is it's not going to happen, so don't worry yourself about it. An interesting thing is what happens when you are so far above the rest? We'll get into that today. Because that does happen when you've got this, this clumping of data and then one or two extreme points. How do we deal with that? And that's where we're going to lead to next week, and we're going to keep with that the rest of five weeks at Colt Course. So you're actually getting a really cool question there. Cool so far? Now, everybody, if you would, run your one-bar stats on your data. Remember, remember your data is in L5, so you have to go one-bar stats L5. Okay, let's start to stop here. <laughs>